Hello and welcome back to my let's play of Final Fantasy XIV. Today we're just going to be continuing the main story quest as usual by um, heading into the Bowl of Embers. That's a uh, mini raid where we'll be facing down the boss uh, Ifrit. Lord of the Inferno, hearken to our plea. Lord of the Inferno, deliver us from our misery. Almighty Ifrit, Lord of the Inferno, your humble servants beseech you, grace us with your divine presence. Almighty Ifrit, we bring before you ignorant savages who know not your godhead. If it please you, Lord, scorch their heathen souls with your cleansing flame, and mark them as your own. But bloody hells! Bring those to as well. Mm. What's going on? The, the same what we agreed? None but servants of Lord Ifrit may behold the right of summoning. The souls of unbelievers are forfeit. No, spare me, I beg you. Pitiful children of man, by my breath I claim you. Arise once more as my loyal minions. Feed my flames of your faith, and all who stand against us shall burn. Almighty Ifrit, my one true God. The words are my bread. Impossible! By what sorcery do you resist my master's will? Could it be? Your soul already belongs to another? Yes, that is the only explanation. Forsooth thy frail mortal frame can serve as vessel to the blessing of but one. Yet I smell not the taint of another upon thee. The truth of thine allegiance waxeth clear. Thou art of the godless blessed's number. The Paragons warned of thine abhorrent kind, thine existence is not to be suffered. Alright, let's get this thing started then. Pretty uh, straightforward fight, um, just need to dodge the ground AoE and the uh, nails that the fight likes to call them. You'll see those uh, as the fight goes on obviously. My flame shall consume thy flesh and soul both! Gotta make sure everybody's topped up as usual. Now we're uh, more important than ever. <laughs> Succumb to the inferno! Oh, don't want to be in that. Everything's looking good so far. Oh, why did that heal not hit? Huh? Surrender thyself to the fires of judgment. There we go. That's the uh, nail right there. Somebody's uh, marked it. Because uh, those things have to be destroyed very quickly. Uh, otherwise bad things happen. I believe it causes a full wipe if they don't get destroyed in time. Like we might be able to find out firsthand what it does once uh, it's not destroyed. Thy soul shall burn for eternity. Thou art strong, mortal. Alright, uh, quite a lot of topping up to do here. Oh, bloody hell. Thankfully, I'm right on the edge of that. Not too far to move to get out of it.
Another one of the uh, crystals. Forgive my lateness. I was delayed by a congregation of Amal Jar zealots. I swear, each seemed more evangelical than the last. Hmm, persistent lot. I see the Blood Swarm wasted no time extracting the captives. No less than I'd expect from the Flame General's hand-picked men. As for those two, it is fair to say their hardships have only just begun. They have much to answer for. I feel I owe you an apology, Alaric. Had I known this mission would prove so dangerous, I would never have left you to face it alone. You have been given a veritable baptism of fire. Let's continue this conversation in more agreeable surrounds. Camp Drybone, shall we say? This way, sir. Right, uh, hopefully he'll teleport us straight to uh, Camp Drybone. Less uh, travelling for us to do. So that was the mighty Ifrit. And what a disappointment he was. The readings are nowhere near what I had anticipated. Even take Nul'dan interference into account. You should know better than to rely upon five-year-old data left by the Seventh Legion. Nor can we expect any form of support from the Motherland given the troubles at court. We have only ourselves to rely upon. Ever the pessimist, my dear Livia. Promise me you will never change. We've wasted enough time here. That meat reveals us too old to give any reading worth a damn. Not that there was all worth a damn for it to read, but I take your point. I suppose we must content ourselves with the knowledge that we've achieved our primary objective. Yet I find that I am troubled by that adventurer's unexpected show of strength. Could such a foe prove a hindrance to our plans? Perhaps, but there's a consideration for another time. You have been given a task, that is your priority. I suggest you treat it as such. Fail to do as my lord commands, and I will spare him the trouble of punishing you. Of allies like that? Beware woman in love. I shall need to be on my best behaviour. And here we are back in Camp Drybone. We'll uh, just head over and talk to Fancred. Ah, there you are, Elric. Come rest a while. You will have no better opportunity. After witnessing their god's ignominious defeat, the MLJ will be less inclined to risk our wrath. For a time, at least. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, I was in the process of apologising. I do hope you can forgive me. I arrived too late to be of any use. To you or the abductees. They may be a whole of body, but the same cannot be said of their minds. For once a man is tempered... Ah, but it suits me to dwell on the negatives. Amidst all our misfortunes, there's still reason to rejoice. Ifrit is slain, and by your hand no less. That is the deed of no ordinary individual, Elric. Not that I ever thought you were ordinary. On the contrary, I have long suspected that you have the potential to shape the fate of this realm. What can I say? My fine eye for talent remains undimmed. Infilia will be proud beyond all reckoning when she hears of your deeds. I trust you shan't object to my bearing the tidings to her. That way I can claim to have contributed something to this mission. You, meanwhile, have earned yourself a rest. Take some time to relax, and return to the waking sands when you're good and ready. 
we can discuss matters in more detail then. Just don't take too long, will you? The realm's problems won't solve themselves. Right, so uh, we'll just head back to uh, the Waking Sands and speak with Minfilia. We'll see you once we get to the uh, destination. Ah, the triumphant hero returns. Fancred told us the news upon his arrival. He is presently in the solar giving a full report to Lady Minfilia. You should join them at once. Lady Minfilia is most eager to see you. Alright, just complete that. My late arrival nearly cost Alric his life. I wasn't there when the Amaljar took him prisoner. And I wasn't there when they served him to Ifrit. Yes, by some miracle he survived. But that does not excuse the fact that he should never have had to face such dangers alone. I failed him utterly. Just as I'm failing you all. What's done is done, Fancred. You can ill blame yourself for every... Elric, it is so good to see you again. Impeccable timing, my friend. I had just finished regaling Minfilia with your heroic exploits. Fancred has told me everything. You have done well to return to us. The perils you faced were undeniably great, yet a part of me believes that I had no cause to fear, and now we can put paid to our long investigation. As we suspected, the Amaljar undertook both the robbery and the abductions of the aim of summoning their primal Ifrit. Nor is this tale limited to Uldar. Similar incidents have been rife in both Limsa Liminsa and Gridania of late. I dare say you are curious as to how these crimes are linked to the primals. Permit me to explain. Having manifested in the physical realm, primals must consume ether if they are to maintain their presence here. And the stronger they become, the more ether they require. Now, ether exists throughout creation. It flows through all life and permeates the very air that we breathe. Alas, this alone will not suffice to sustain the likes of Ifrit. Nay, he and his kind require a more concentrated source of ether. Crystals. It is for this reason that instance involving crystals can often be traced back to a primal. Which leaves us with the why of the abductions. To understand this, you must first understand how primals are born. When all is well with the world, primals possess no physical form. Their essence is dispersed across the great river of ether. However, when the world is plunged into chaos, those who worship the primals cry out to their gods for deliverance from suffering. These cries serve as a beacon towards which a primal's essence is irresistibly drawn. It is this coming together, or etheric coalescence, which grants the beings physical form. Once born, a primal gains strength from its followers' worship. The more numerous and fervent they are, the more powerful their god becomes. But the primals are seldom satisfied with such reverence as their adherents freely give. And in order to gain more power, they do not scruple to create followers. They do this by tempering mortals, a process to which you yourself were subjected. Yet even as Ifrit you took your comrades in his thrall, you alone remained unaffected. This is thanks to the power you possess, the Echo. We know not the why of it, but those blessed with the Echo are immune to primal influence. It is as though a greater power protects us. When first you came to us, I told you that the Echo would be instrumental in dealing with the primal threat. I trust you now begin to see why. The recent incidents all share a common trait, meticulous planning. Such elaborate designs are a new development, and one which fills me with an unshakable sense of foreboding. While I share your concern, my presiding feeling is one of relief at your safe return. Ah, the Immortal Flames assured me that they will deal with the aftermath, so you need not concern yourself with that. We may rest easy for a time. I suggest you take full advantage of the respite, Elric. You may be sure it won't last long. Once the people learn the identity of the hero who fell the fruit, I fear you will have nary a moment to yourself. Whether she intended to or no, Minfilia neglected to tell you something. Something I think it would be best you heard from one of us. It concerns the tempered abductees that were rescued. I am sorry to report that all are to be put to death. The flames with whom you were imprisoned included. Needless to say, this information must not be made known to the public. I swear to you that we would not do this if there were any other recourse, but once a man is tempered, he is tempered for life. His very existence lends strength to the primal whom he cannot choose but worship. And so we scions continue our fight, that no more innocents need be sacrificed. 
I hope that you will continue to stand with us, Alaric. But I should be going. I must offer my apologies to the Flame General for the losses his people suffered. Till next time. Gods forgive me. How many more lives? Louis, why would never have allowed this to happen? I have to do better. I have to be stronger. We'll uh, end this episode here, and we'll see you guys next time.